Hey there Music Maker, in today's video we're going to be looking at the chord changes to the classic Bill Monroe instrumental Roanoke. If you haven't had a chance already, we've got a video out on the melody to this tune, but today's video is going to be all about chop chords and how to get a really good bluegrass rhythm mandolin sound. Before we go ahead and dive into the lesson though, if you haven't had a chance, hit that subscribe button below and the bell notification button. That way you get notified whenever we upload a new video lesson here to the Mandolin Secrets channel. Also, if you're interested in things like PDFs of the tab and sheet music for all of our lessons, check out the link below in the description to Mandolin Secrets Academy. There you're going to find all of those goodies plus access to our growing community of mandolin learners just like you. All right, before we go ahead and dive into actually breaking this tune down, I'm going to give you a version of the chord changes to Roanoke at 260 beats per minute. This is darn near performance tempo. That being said, Monroe plays this somewhere around 300 or 320 beats per minute on his recordings, so this one can get going pretty fast. Um, but we're going to give it to you a little slower here just so you can kind of get a feel for how I'm placing these chop chords on the off beats. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into that, okay? <laughs> Alright, now that you've had a chance to see what the chord changes look like at full speed, let's go ahead and talk about some tips for how to kind of do an appropriate bluegrass chop and get the most out of this tune. When I think about the bluegrass chop, I don't really think so much about holding chords down and then releasing them whenever I strum the strings. I'm almost keeping my fingers hovering on the strings. Uh, if, if I were to play the strings uh, in my natural resting position for chop chords, they would sound like this. And then kind of what I do is each time a chop chord rolls around, I put my fingers down just before I need to hit it and then release really quickly. It's almost like you're just targeting beats two and four and only pressing your fingers down on those beats or just before those beats in order to get a really nice pop or bark to your chop. So for example, if I was to hold my fingers down and chop chords uh, on beats two and four, this is kind of what it would sound like. A one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. So you can see that the tones of the chord are ringing out really heavily here. And, and in my opinion, modern bluegrass players kind of prefer more of what I was calling like a bark. Um, that's why they call it a chop. You can think of like an axe chopping a piece of wood. Um, there's a really kind of bass heavy, almost uh, explosion that happens on your chop chord. So example A, and then example B. I'm sure you can hear the difference in tone there, and it may take you some time to kind of 
develop the, the kind of fine motor skills in your left hand to only press down right before you need those chop chords to happen. But that's definitely how I think about it. Also, before we dive into to kind of looking at these uh, chop chords, let's go ahead and look at the shapes that we're using today. So I'm using our standard G chop shape here. Pinky on seventh fret of G, ring on fifth fret of D, index on second of A, and then middle on third of the E. That can be kind of a spread for a lot of folks, but I know that with some practice, you can stretch your fingers out to get it, even with small hands, I promise. So the other two chords in this tune, C and D, are actually built off of this same shape. We just remove our pinky, and to get a C chord, we move everything down a string, down as in bass you know, direction. So ring is on the fifth fret of G, index is on the second fret of D, middle is on the third fret of A, and we kind of block out that top string. We kind of avoid it with our right hand. And then for our D chord, we simply just take this shape and scooch it up two frets. So we've got ring finger on seventh fret of G, index on fourth fret of D, and middle on fifth fret of A. All right, my friend, with those tips about the chop that I kind of talked about and these chord changes, I think we're ready to dive into this at kind of a medium tempo. So I'm gonna play a version of this at 150 beats per minute, and then afterwards, we're gonna slow it down even more to 100 beats per minute. As always, if you're going through these exercises and any of these, even our slowest tempo, happen to be a little too quick for you, don't hesitate to use that gear icon below and adjust the speed of the video down to one that's more appropriate for you right now. It's a tool that I use all the time and I think it's one of the greatest kind of uh, tools that we have available to us in this modern digital video age. All right, here's Roanoke chords at 150 beats per minute. All right, my friend, that's it for the chord changes at 150 beats per minute. I hope you're getting a feel for how to kind of attack those left hand uh, motions on beats two and four. But if you're having a little more trouble, we're gonna slow it down once more to 100 beats per minute and tackle it from there, okay? Just remember, float those fingers on top of the strings and only press them down right before you need them. That's really gonna be key to getting that nice bass heavy chop sound, I promise. All right, let's dive in at 100 beats per minute.
Okay, my friend, that is it for the chord changes to Roanoke. I hope that you had a good time uh, playing through this tune, and the skills that you've learned in this lesson here today don't just apply to the tune Roanoke, they pretty much apply to every bluegrass standard that you're gonna come up against. So that left hand articulation for the chop is gonna come in real important if you're gonna be going out to your bluegrass jam circles. Before we get out of here today, if you haven't had a chance, leave us a comment below and let us know, are chop chords something that you're used to playing or is this new to you? We're really interested to kind of know who are our bluegrass players out there and who wants to learn more about this topic. So shoot us a comment below, all right? All right, my friend, thank you so much for checking this video out. And like I said, if you haven't had a chance, check out the melody lesson that we have to Roanoke. You're definitely gonna wanna learn the tune to this one. All right, my friend, thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you down the line.